Hello class, we are here to discuss linear transformation of random variables and in particular their effect on mean and variance. Well, first let's get into a definition. Suppose we have any random variable, capital X, A and B are numbers, then this capital Y, this is a new random variable. Capital Y is A, capital X plus B. And this is what's called a linear transformation. So I really have a few remarks. One I wrote, won't write down, but if you had say one X plus B, this B is just shifting all of the values um, in your support. And generally this A is scaling. Okay, but my first note is X may be discrete or continuous. We can still perform this linear transformation. Um, in fact, if X is discrete, so will Y be. If X is continuous, well, so will Y be. Um, the next comment for each value, little x in the support of capital X, the value A x plus b is in the support of capital Y. Now this um, olive covered colored comment is important. Um, if you've had a class in linear algebra, you know linear transformation means something and in particular, uh, this would not be. A better word is affine transformation, but in any case, we will use linear transformation this semester. Okay, so let's do two examples and then I'll talk about the effect of linear transformation on mean and variance. The first one, we saw this, um, this module, this f of x is one over five on the interval 130 to 135, this modeled the weight of a lightweight mailboxer in pounds. Well, we have a new random variable y, which is 2x plus 1. I just want to sketch the PDF of x, and we will be able to sketch the PDF of y here. And this has a name called the uniform distribution, uh, but for now, we're just looking at this graph. OK, well, what is the support of capital Y? Well, think about the endpoints here. When X is, I'll write it over here, 130, Y would be, well, it's 260 plus 1. And when X is 135, Y would be, well, 270 plus 1, 271. We go from 261 to 271. Now, we cannot just do this. We put this here and maybe stretch it to be uh, covering the whole interval. We cannot do that. Put it back. The reason is, if you did that, say you have height one fifth, what's the total area here? Well, it's one fifth times 10, it's two. That would not be a probability density function. The probability density function has to change so that you still have area one. So what will happen over here, just as a remark, this will be height one over 10. So over here, this is the variable X, and over here, variable Y. All right. Here's an example from the last lesson. We had this probability mass function. It came from assigning a score to each DNA nucleotide. But in any case, here is a probability mass function for random variable capital X. Now, first of all, let's write down the support. Even though we see it, it's going to help us work with this capital Y. So the support of X is zero, one, two, and three. Very nice. Now, we will write down a probability mass function for Y equals three X plus four. So to start this, we can write down the support of Y. Well, for each X, and 
this set, we just take 3x plus 4. So we have 4, we have 7, we have 10, and 13. All right. Now, we put these here. So y can be 4, 7, 10, and 13. Well, how do you get the probabilities? Well, you just look back which x mapped to 4. And you write down this probability for f of y. And then x equals 1 gave us the 7. x equals 2 gave us the 10. And x equals 3 gave us the 13. So this would be our probability mass function for 3x plus 4. Okay, I also used this example in this video because of this. So we calculated for this capital X, the expected value of two and the expected value of two X. And we saw expected value of two was two, expected value of two X was two times expected value of X. And this generalizes. And so the theorem is here, the expected value of ax plus b is a times the expected value of x plus b. Well, let's think about this one before I mention the statement for variance. You see if b is 0, expected value of ax is a times expected value of x. Well, that looks very much like something I wrote down in the last lesson. In fact, it's exactly what I wrote down in the last lesson. And similarly, if little a was 0, the expected value of b is b. I also wrote this down in the last lesson. So either one of these expected value or variance you could justify using algebra. Moreover, both hold for both discrete random variables and continuous random variables. All right, so the statement on variance, the variance of a x plus b is a squared times the variance of x. All right. Here's, well, one example continuous, one example discrete. Using both of these equations in this theorem, um, we have seen both of these random variables. In particular, for x, this discrete random variable, we practice learning how to calculate expected value and variance in R for this example. And these are the numbers we got. Moreover, for this continuous random variable y, we practice calculating um, mean and variance for a continuous random variable in R, and these are the values we got. If you didn't do that, go back and practice. It's an important skill inside R. Very nice. Well, what we want, we just want four quantities here. We want the expected value and variance of 3x plus 1. We want the expected value and variance of 10y minus 6. You notice I do not need to calculate the supports here. All I need are expected value, variance, and, well, let's use our formulas. So the expected value of 3x plus 1, well, this would be 3, expected value of x, plus 1. And here, this would be 3 times 3.25 plus 1. We get 9.75 plus 1, or 10.75. Next one. Same random variable, but we want the variance. So the variance of 3x plus 1. This would be 3 squared times the variance of x. This will be 9 times 0 0.9325, which I have 8.3925, 8.3925. Three, we want the expected value of 10y minus six. Now you notice to calculate this, well, I'm just using both of these. In fact, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this calculation that y was continuous or x was discrete once I know their variances and expected values. So 
first, this would be 10 expected value of y minus 6. So when I multiply, OK, it's going to be like a 26.66667. Seven minus six, and this is twenty point six 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 seven. Looks good to me. Last one. We want the variance of ten y minus six, and this would be ten squared or one hundred times the variance of y. Okay, we just move the decimal place over two, so we get 88.8889. Fantastic. Well, this is the end of this lesson. It was a bit shorter than the others in this module, um, but still important. So thank you so much.